Hi guys, welcome to GoTutorial Part 17. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog, and today we are going to modify our web app to allow for multi-worded uh, titles. Before we get started, I just thought I'd mention that Go 1.8 just recently came out. Now there aren't any huge major syntactic changes to Go 1.8. The biggest changes that were made were mostly to optimization and performance. If you do decide to go ahead and install 1.8, there are a few things that you should do. For example, on your Go path, you'll notice that you have a folder called PKG. Inside of this folder, you have a bunch of your dependencies, and they've been compiled to these .a files. And this basically allows your uh, Go projects to run really quickly. So they don't need to be recompiled every single time you're running your projects and stuff. So what you want to do is when you update to 1.8 from 1.7, you want to delete this entire folder so that when you do actually rebuild your projects, they will get built from scratch because some of the .a files will not be optimized for 1.8 and this will cause slowdowns and stuff. Anyway, so let's start working on this project here. So our goal here is to add multi-word titles to our file. If you remember in our create function here, we actually have a statement here that says if our string contains a space in it, then we just redirect back to create. So that way people can't create a title with a space in it. So instead of that, we're going to actually modify this. But before we do that, we need to actually go down to our closure here, our check path closure, and we need to talk about how this is working. So currently with our check path closure, we have this path variable, and the way that we're getting the path variable is we are checking to see if this r.url.path is matching with our regex, which is up top. And so the r.url.path is actually a slice of strings and it comes from our URL path. So this is what it would look like. So for example, here is a URL and this is what our actual output will look like. So our path variable will output this sort of array and it will have each of the strings will be um, divided at where the backslashes are. So this is what it would look like. It'll say localhost 8000 test test. And that's why we're passing in path uh, index 2 because index 2 is where this test will be. So when we actually extend this to two pages, so for example, if we just type in test page and say that that's our URL, the problem is that there's now a space here. And of course, in a URL, you don't want a space. Even in here, we have a space and that's just going to get confusing. So instead of having a space, we want to have an underscore. So we want it to basically look like this. We want localhost 8000 test, and then we want the word that had a space in it to be replaced with an underscore. So the first thing we need to do is we need to allow underscores to actually happen inside of our regex. Now there's this nice little website called regex101.com and it allows us to actually take a look at what a regex would look like and what matches our regular expression. So if we copy and paste our regular expression in here, you'll actually see that we have what are called two capturing groups. So the first capturing group is either edit, save, or test. So if we type in edit, well first we have to type in a backslash. So we type in backslash edit, and then we type in any word after it. So this will match, even though it's a bunch of gobbledygook. But as soon as we put an underscore in here, it doesn't match. So we need to figure out, okay, well, how can we modify this to add an underscore? Well, there are two ways with regular expressions. One of them is to literally put an underscore here. So if we put an underscore inside the brackets, it will literally say, okay, look for underscores. And as you can see, edit hello world is now working. But the other way to do it is a little bit more succinct. And that is to replace all of this with colon backslash W plus colon. Now what this is doing is it's saying, okay, match any word character, which is equal to A to Z, uppercase A to Z, or zero to nine, and then underscore. And we can match that as many times as we want. So let's copy this into our application. So if we copy it into our application, we're gonna get an error here. And the reason is, is because we're using double quotes. We you have to use back quotes, so the single back quotes, and that will fix it. 
Now the problem came from this backslash. Of course, that's an escaping character in double quotes in Go. So now we fixed our regex to account for underscores. Now we need to actually create the underscores. So let's go down to our create method and let's fix this here. So the way to do this in Go is to just use a function called strings.replace to replace all the spaces with underscores. So we're going to say title equals strings.replace. Then we put in title. Then we put in the space that we want to replace. Then we put in underscore, which we want to replace it with. And then we put in negative one, which is the index. And that basically says iterate through the entire string, find all the spaces and replace them with underscores. So this is fine for our create function, but of course we need to add a few more things to our file. So let's actually go back into our data.go file and modify it a little bit. So we want to actually save our title inside of our database with the underscores, not the spaces. So of course we can put that if statement in here as well. So if we just put in the if string dot contains and then we instead of title this will be p dot title and we replace these titles with p dot title this will not only save our p dot title with underscores inside of our sql lite database it will also create a file name with underscores instead of spaces so now let's go back into our main.go file and now we need to append a few of our functions so in particular, we want to append our search function. So when somebody searches for a function, the way it works is that we use this page exists function to check inside of our database and match the actual string that we're sending in here. And we've actually got a redundancy here. So let's remove this. When we send this in there, we need to match the two together. So we want to say, okay, s.value equals strings.replace. And we want to replace all the s value spaces with underscores like we were doing above. Now the reason we're not using an if statement here is because it really doesn't matter. So with our view and our edit function, we're actually getting our title in with an underscore now. So we want to convert that underscore to a space when we go to render the actual string. So we say if strings contains and we're going to say if this contains an underscore and let's fix contains then we want to replace the underscore with a space so that should work for us now so now when we render our test element to the screen we will be rendering it without underscores it'll be rendered with spaces so it'll look a little neater to the user now we need to do the same for our edit which is down here now this is of course going to cause a problem which we will fix in a moment but first i want to show you why we're getting a problem and then we also want to do the same for our save so in here we want to say title equals strings dot replace title and we want to replace all the spaces with underscores in this all right so now let's go ahead and run this and take a look at our application all right so we need to create a user now so our user will be uppercase tensor and now we've logged in so let's create a page and let's just call this page hello world and let's say this is our hello world page and let's create the page and as you can see we've got a page called hello world in the url it has an underscore but as it's being rendered it's being rendered with a space even up in our nav bar it's being rendered with the space however if we click the edit url this is going to cause an error as you can see 404 page not found now what's happening is we're sending it in with a space here because we're rendering it with a space and the way that we're rendering this link in our template is by actually sending in the title so if we go into our template here so our test template as you can see here it says edit and then dot title we're also going to have a problem with our edit title here as you can see we have a save and then we have dot title as well so the way that we fix this is we add functionality to our templates and the way that we add functionality to our templates is we have to go back into our main.go file and we have to basically create that functionality so if we go to our render function here 
we can create that functionality. So we can create a small function that allows us to basically take a piece of data and manipulate it. So in this case, we want to manipulate the piece of data so that when it's in a URL setting, it has the underscores. What we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called func map. We're going to set that equal to template dot func map. Now this is of course something that's built into our function or our template rather. And this is allowing us to create a string that we can parse inside of the template itself. And when it gets parsed by the go parser, it will read it as a function. So what we will say is, okay, if we want to create a function called URLize, and that's what we're going to create, we want to bind it to this function that takes in a string and outputs a string and returns strings dot replace and then we put in s we replace the spaces with underscores and of course we do it like we were doing before of course we need a comma here so now to actually put this into our templates we need to say okay template new and we're going to pass name in here and then we want to add funks and then we're going to pass in func map and then we're going to say parse glob and what this will do is it will create a new template, so a static template, every single time with the functionality of this parse map here, with this you know small anonymous function connected to it inside of our glob. So now let's rerun our program before we've actually edited our templates. And so if I reload, it's going to ask me to re-log in. So I've logged in, and if we search out hello world, it should find hello world, which is this page that we've created before. So now if we hit edit, it will still have a problem. Let's now edit the template itself. So if we go in here, we can say, okay, title, and then we can pipe in URLIs, which is the uh, name of the function that we created before. So let's save this and let's reload this. All right, so now we're back at our test and we, had, we didn't have to rerun run our, our uh, actual project because we're just editing the templates. So now if we actually inspect the link, as you can see down here, it says edit and then hello underscore world. So our URLIs function is now working as intended. And if we click edit, instead of getting an error, it should lend us to the edit page. So as you can see, we're now on the edit page. Now, of course, we're going to get an error if we click save and I'll show you why. So we'll inspect save real quick. And as you can see here, save is going to hello space world with this percent 20 in between it percent 20 is a space so if we hit save this will save it as hello space world which is what we don't want so let's go back luckily our regex is actually protecting things so when it's throwing this 404 page not found it, the reason why is because hello world with a space in it does not actually fulfill our regex inside of our closure it doesn't actually get saved to our database and it doesn't actually create a file called hello space world so let's go edit the template save and fix that so in here we have our save so all we have to do is add a pipe and then we type in url eyes and this will of course fix everything so now if we reload this and we hit save it works correctly all right guys so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did feel free to subscribe and like and of course Feel free to comment if you have any questions. And by all means, if you dislike the tutorial, then feel free to downvote it as much as you want. So before I go, I just wanted to mention that we will be having a poll for the next programming language that we are going to go over in our video tutorials. I'd like everybody to participate if they can. Um, I'll probably have an official announcement video at some point when I actually do create the poll. That way people on YouTube don't get left out. And you don't have to follow me on Twitter either. Alright guys, so I hope you have a good night.